thought I'd make a video just going through some of the uh, gear that I took with me on a on a first try at motorcycle camping. Um, I found the videos that other people have done on YouTube pretty useful in terms of choosing um, what I took with me, and uh, so some of this might be useful to uh, someone else who's having a uh, think about doing similar. So first of all, um, tent. Um, this is a, a Van Gogh Halo 300. It's a three-person tent. Um, it's complete overkill for uh, solo motorcycle camping, which is what I was doing. And the only reason I really ended up with it is because my wife wanted to have a go at camping as well. And we went car camping with it first. And, it, it, you know, it would still fit on the bike but it would have been a lot better to have something smaller. Um, some nice things about this tent though, I mean, um, with any of this gear, if anybody wants me to go through and sort of do more detailed reviews on it, then I'm happy to, um, but there are other videos and reviews out there on most of this stuff anyway. Um, this has got two doors, um, which is good if there's two of you. It's also just makes the tent quite nice to be in if you've got the doors open and it's quite light rather than uh, being more of a tunnel that you have to crawl into. Uh, and it's the other thing that's good about it is you can sit up in it, which is just quite nice in terms of changing gear, especially when you've got bike gear and things to change in and out of. Uh, so that's the tent itself. Poles, separate bag, distribute those in the two panniers to spread the weight around a little bit. Um, the uh, pegs actually have a bag somewhere around here, it goes inside this as well. And I also took a, a separate footprint um, just to protect the base of the, uh, the ground sheet in the actual tent itself um, from any rough ground. Um, overall it worked pretty well, but as I say, it's a, it's a bit larger than, than really needed, so it's, uh, it's a bit overkill in, in that sense. So that's the tent. In terms of sleeping equipment, I um, also ended up by coincidence with a, a Van Gogh bag. This is a, not a particularly expensive bag. It's a, a synthetic bag that is um, rated down to a comfort limit of five degrees C uh, and zero as a, as a sort of safety limit, I guess they call it, uh, for it says minus 15 extreme. So in the numbers, don't, I, I couldn't figure out what they all meant when I was trying to buy a sleeping bag. Um, this, this effectively, I think, is, is good. It's a quarter three season bag. And for me, I, I sleep, what they say um, is you sleep cold or warm. I sleep warm so that I don't tend to get too cold. I t tend to, if anything, to get too hot. So um, that, that was okay for me. Um, the trip that I've just done to France wasn't too cold. Um, be before that, we did actually go Scotland car camping, as I mentioned and we got down to about three degrees C in that. Um, this was starting to get you know, right down to the limits of what I would be comfortable with. I was waking up a little bit cold, um, but I could have stuck uh, you know, a layer of clothes on and I would have been fine, I'm sure. But you know, any, any, any much lower than that, you're probably gonna be a little bit uncomfortable. But what's really good about it is for a, a, a not particularly expensive bag, I think this was uh, 58 pounds, something like that, um, it, it is pretty small and uh, relatively light. I think it weighs yeah, 1.2 kilos. Um, that's compressed a little bit at the moment. You can compress a bit more and so on. So it will actually go in, in, into the panniers quite well. The other things that then go with the sleeping bag is a sleep mattress. This one is uh, an, an air mattress type. It's an XPED Simmat UL7 um, and I did try a self-inflating mattress at first and to, uh, but couldn't really get comfortable with that so decided to splash out a bit more on something which most reviews suggested would be more comfortable. Um, the air mattress really needs something to help you blow it up. Uh, you can blow this up with your mouth but it's it's not recommended and you can there's there's loads of coverage of, of why on the internet but the um, 
So you, you can get one of these which is called a Schnozzle pump bag from Exped. It, it, it's a, a dry bag as you can see but it also has a valve on the bottom so you can you can plug that in. You grab some air, roll it down, squeeze the air in. Very simple but it actually does work. A bit annoying to have to spend, some, um, spend extra uh, on something to inflate the mattress you've just bought but there you go. Um, it does work and the, the other thing you can do though is put the sleeping bag inside this and roll out the air with the air coming out through the valve squashing the bag as you go and then seal the, seal the valve up. That um, will make that bag even smaller, it'll make it a little bit um, smaller and every little helps when you're trying to squeeze something into a set of panniers I guess. So that um, is, is the main components of the sleep stuff. Not forgetting a pillow and this one is the Cetus Summit Eros pillow. Um, looked up some reviews online and uh, videos and so on. Comes out pretty well, and I would agree with that. I think it's a very good pillow. Um, I ended up buying the large. I, I originally bought the, the I think it's called regular or medium size one. There's only two sizes. And that was fine. I've still got that, but uh, this is this is not, it's hardly any bigger in terms of pack size. Weighs hardly any, uh, anything at all anyway. And even in, in the large size will fit within the hood area of the sleeping bag so it will actually kind of stay put which is quite nice. Um, highly recommend that, um, it was really good. So um, I would say that overall with this gear, the, the Van Gogh sleeping bag is well designed, it's, qu it's quite nice in terms of uh, the way that the hood will pull around you and keep, keep warm air in. Um, all, all of these little things actually really do help once it starts getting cold and just generally it, it, it does look pretty good, feels, feels quite nice. I'd say though that some of the execution of that is, is not always that great. We had two of these and we sent my wife's back because the stitching was falling apart as soon as we, we got it and um, the things like the zip uh, catches quite a lot on this, it's quite annoying. So, but it's, it's not a particularly expensive bag um, and it does seem to, you know, for the, for the size and the weight and the, uh, what it will do for you, I think that's pretty good. Um, these get good reviews, some people prefer the Thermarest type, um, some prefer, prefer these. Um, I sleep on my side which seems to be a bit of a no-no if you're going camping and I, I found that even with this um, I was waking up after a few hours, I've just still not got used to it. Maybe I will, I don't know, but I, my hip, hip was getting uncomfortable and sometimes my shoulder as well. So the kind of pressure points, it's not, just not, excuse me for the noise, not, not really man enough for the job. So I guess you can go up to a thicker mattress, but it's all extra weight and, and so on. So um, wasn't, you know, I didn't get a perfect night's sleep, but uh, not, not too bad. If you sleep on your back, I'd say that's probably very comfortable. Um, you know, I can lie on this on my back and I don't tend to sleep like that, but um, it's very comfortable when you lie on your back because the weight is spread across more of it, so you tend not to sink right through it. So that's the sleeping gear. So, um, cooking gear. This is a the alert. Uh, collapsible or roll up water carrier uh, that takes 10 litres. Um, it's it's pretty cheap, cheap thing I found. Um, very simple. If I can get, it, get this out. Um, just unrolls, just put, put some water in it when you get to campsite. That's your water supply. Um, works fine, very simple thing. The um, the only downside from the first trip, you, as you can see, probably I've got the same problem now, <laughs> is drying the things. It's a bit like uh, when you have a uh, like a camelback water bladder or something like that. It, difficult to get them fully dry, so I'll have to find a way to uh, prop that open. So that's a uh, simple water carrier. Um, then I had uh, a set of pots and what I'll do is actually, um, in a minute, go and get another set of pots uh, to show you as well. 
This is um, part of a set of Alpkit Alley Pots. So Alpkit is the make, UK uh, make. These ones are actually made by a Chinese company called Fire Maple who tend to make a lot of the ones that you see on the market. Um, but they're supplied by Alpkit in the UK at a good price. The, the, the set, this set, um, I think, uh, I might get this wrong, I think it was £20, I'll, I'll check and put it under the, uh, as a caption if not. Um, it was actually a set of four, so there's actually another pot that fits inside this with a lid. Um, and I'll, I'll show you the other ones later, I've got, I got a, a smaller set as well from Halfords, which I haven't used yet, but uh, that was a bargain in the sale at about £5, made by the same company, um, tiny little set. The only reason I uh, decided to go for these is that just having the luxury of bacon, if I'm going to be going in the UK, um, I took these to France and that was completely pointless of course, so these were far bigger than needed. On the other hand, the way that this will all pack, which I'll try and show you in a moment, means that that's not a complete dead loss. Um, that will fit within the width of my metal panniers, I've got some 37 litre Gibby panniers, that will fit easily within, within that. So. If you then pack well and use the space well within it, then it's not too much of a loss anyway. Um, they're not heavy at all. Um, so the, the, those are the pots, um, the handles which pop out, like any good camping type stuff does. Um, the other things we've got there, this is uh, made by GSI and it's, a, I think they're called nesting uh, bowl and mug set, something as... Uh, complicated as that and uh, that's your bowl um, you can see that this is very similar except that it has a neoprene sleeve on it and a lid which means that there is now a mug um, so it will keep your, keep your drink or soup warm or whatever and it's nesting because it does that so quite good and it doesn't take up too much space so I actually, before I got this, I, I bought a, some, a, a full set of pans and these from GSI uh, in something called the Dualist set, which is a set for two people, which includes the, a pot, two sets of these, and uh, some other bits and bobs. Um, the one I got was actually quite damaged when I got it from the shop, and I sent it back, and then realised that I'd probably be better off with uh, buying something more, more like what I've got here although that does seem to get very good reviews and is a good set itself. So that's the, uh, the mug and bowl set there. The stove uh, is again from Alpkit. Uh, I think they call this the Kraku stove. Um, and it, again, it's made by Fire Maple. So a lot of the stoves that you will see under various names um, that look similar is because they are all made by a Chinese company called Fire Maple. Uh, who seem to make very good stuff actually. This is, um, this is really nice gear. This one is a titanium stove, so really weighs next to nothing. Um, and the you, you can get ones that will just screw on top of your gas canister and pop up like that. This one has a, as you can see, has a remote um, tube so that it, it stands away. The reason that you might want to have that is that it, it can mean that this is a little bit more stable if it's if it's not sort of propped up on something which you then got a pot on top of and which, which might tip. You know, most people get on with them fine, so I don't think that's a big deal. The um, the other things about it though is in theory you're able to invert the canister, which uh, as I understand it if you get into quite cold conditions then gas stops working because I guess it's not evaporating sufficiently to um, get into the stove but by running it upside down you're actually letting the liquid gas go into the stove and it, it will actually in, in theory light. Now I don't think I've really had the temperatures to demonstrate whether or not that really works. This also, this particular model also comes with uh, what's called a preheat tube, which just means that the uh, the gas gets gets warmed up by the the flame before it goes in, in theory to make it burn better in the cold conditions. So um, it, 
you know, for the little bit of extra money that it was, I decided to go for that. And you know, after all, it's titanium, which is you know, probably the main reason I went for it. In all honesty, because you get the kind of nice colour, don't you? Um, so that that's that. Um, well worth getting. I I, I think the Alp kit um, stuff that they do when you can get hold of it, they tend to do limited batch runs, and if when it's run out, you've got to kind of wait until they get some more in. Um, but very nice to deal with, really good delivery. Um, you're dealing with a British company and so on, so that's uh, pretty good. So, uh, briefly showed the canister earlier. Um, went with one larger size one on this trip. Also, you can get um, ones that are half the size of this, um, which actually is probably sufficient for a week's trip. Uh, this type of canister is not as uh, common in other countries so um, I think these can be bought for instance in France apparently in decathlon stores which are pretty common out there if you run out but in general um, they will tend to have uh, places like camp um, camp shops and, and so on and uh, garages um, things that look like aerosol cans though those style of gas cartridges which are pure butane not a this is a butane not a propane mix and they, they take they have a different um, adapter system um, I haven't got it yet but I'm just ordering up uh, an adapter from eBay which will allow this type of stove to be used with the other types of cartridges so I'm going to carry one of those in the future so I'll, I'll be able to take a smaller one of these and if it runs out I've got the backup of being able to use, buy those canisters easily abroad it just means that you're carrying a little bit less weight I guess so that's that. Um, also took a, a windshield which just sets up around the base of the the stove um, and will just mean that things will heat up a bit more efficiently. Um, as soon as you get a breeze it, uh, it really helps to have something like that. Um, easily carried. So that's most of the gear. Um, Got some cutlery. You could you could get anything. You can get the plastic type or whatever. Again, this is from Alpkit, and it's some titanium ones. Um, I quite quite like those, and you can get folding ones. I haven't tried those, and I just felt that these might be a little bit more comfortable to use. So, a uh, bit of a luxury, I guess, to go for something that is probably a bit a bit more awkward to pack than the folding ones. But there you go. Uh, lighter. Uh, got a decent little lighter, and uh, I also took this. This was a fire steel. I only took this because I already had it. Um, it made me feel like Bear Grylls having it, but never used it. And uh, you know, I guess as long as you can get a lighter or some matches, which you're probably going to be able to get most places, uh, you wouldn't have a problem anyway. But um, yeah, you could take that, and that would be a little backup if if you if you wanted something like that. Um, I also took uh, just some silicon, just, this is just a silicon trivet from home that I cut up. The, what I did was stood the uh, stove on top of that so that it was protecting whatever the stove was sat on. Uh, I, I'm not sure how important that was because I don't know how hot it would get actually underneath anyway, it was just a precaution and that's just a spare bit in case I wanted something else to pick up a hot pan even though there are handles uh, you never know um, you don't want to burn yourself so um, that was that was the main stuff um, and what I what I worked out with this is that by by putting, putting them like this I could pop the stove in there like that and then um, just a little cut up um, Pad, scour pad type thing um, could go in as well. The lighter and also just a cut in half mic microfiber cloth for uh, drying, drying and washing up. Uh, that would stuff in there too. Um, I can get the stove together. goes in its little bag
windshield can go in, in its little bag. Stop kids getting scratched up, I guess. That will go on there like that. The, um, the lid will actually go on top of all of that, just about. Um, and then, believe it or not, I won't do it now, just because it takes a, takes a couple of seconds, which you probably don't need uh, to waste your time on, but that, that will all fit into that bag, and that will cinch down and just keep all of that together. Um, so, although this, as I said earlier, was a slightly bigger pot than was really needed, uh, it, it, it does actually pack quite efficiently, so not, not a total dead loss. The other one though that I wanted to show, I, I, I bought after this, and I haven't used this one yet. This, um, this I found, it was on sale at a store in the UK here called Halfords, which everyone in the UK will know, it's an auto, like an auto zone. Um, and in here, it's just, a, it's a single pot with a, a lid which I guess is a, a small pot in itself you could use or you could uh, maybe do your water in that or whatever I don't know there you go and, there's, and it'll fit a gas canister in it that is the I'm trying to see what size that is so I think that's it is that the 250 gram not sure you can see it's not the very the, 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 there's ones that come that are really tiny and then this is kind of a standard size then you get massive ones but th th this is you know de decent sized that will go easily in there um, but thought it's worth showing that that actually is it, again as i say it's fire maple you can see the uh, the family similarity between the two um slightly different finish on them and so on but uh, this, this was a fiver five pounds so it in, a, in, in the sale, um, so it was a no-brainer to pick up. I, th I, th I think if I was travelling on my own again, just the, um, the the saving in pannier space uh, would probably be worth it. Obviously, I have to forsake my bacon, but uh, if you're just cooking, you know, soups or, or pasta with with, with something, then uh, this would uh, this would do the job. Uh, so anyway, so that's. A um, couple of cook set options. Wanted to show you that um, out kit. Got a few bits as you can see from from them. Um, worth checking out if you're in the UK. They have a website. They sell direct, and they also have a, a factory shop. I think somewhere up uh, from memory serves me right uh, up near Nottingham. Um, but th they they make they, they they produce some stuff which is unique to their brand, mainly clothing. That kind of thing uh, and things like that. So they they got some nice gear, at, at generally great pr prices, I think, and uh, you know no problems with quality at all. So, so that was that. Uh, as a luxury item, I also took this, uh, which uh, is worth mentioning to you. I think uh, there are various things I that I looked up as to how to do coffee if you're um, going camping. Um, and there's all sorts of backpack solutions for doing that with you know with these kind of ultralight pots and things you can fit on them and all this kind of stuff then I came across these and this this seemed to be a sort of a simpler option so it's quite nice to have a, a proper mug rather than the, the one I showed you earlier in there anyway just for your tea or your coffee um, and that that's an insulated mug but it's also got this which is a cafetiere french press type thing so you literally just put your coffee grounds in let it steep push it down and get a lid so that's that's nice um works works well so um if you if you know having real coffee is something that kind of matters you as a bit of a luxury then i'd recommend those the only other thing perhaps worth mentioning for my uh cooking stuff is that i made these up so, as I, as I mentioned, I've got some the, the metal type panniers that go on the side of the bike. And what I'd seen was tabletops made of, out of aluminium uh, that you could get for some makes of those. You can't get them for the ones that I've got. And 
then I came across a company that, uh, for their make of panniers, did a similar thing. They and they used plywood, and they said that the reason they did that was actually that this is lighter for a given strength um, than aluminium. So I don't, I haven't looked up to see if that's strictly true, but um, they were using I think three mil ply. I ended up with some five mil ply just because that's what happened to be in the store when I went to get it and it was pretty simple to cut those to size I put some little magnets on the top of the panniers and on these just to help them locate but those basically just sit across the tops of the panniers and they worked out a treat actually they um, they work really well surprisingly I, I, did, I thought it would be a complete disaster but um, it gave me a tabletop surface up at a decent height um, which, which I was able to use to do just have the stove on and uh, my, my plate and pot and things like that which was much nicer than scrabbling around on the floor trying to cook so um, we'll have a go at that I did also take with me a, a Helinox chair I think it, I can't exactly remember what it's called I'll, I'll put it up as a caption it's called the chair one or the uh, something like that but um, you can see videos again about these but it's just a, a low height chair folds up um, and it's pretty light again I'll as if I can stick the weight in the caption um, but that with the combination of the table on the panniers and I was sticking a photo up here somewhere um, worked out really well it's just a you know pretty easy to pack setup but gave me a comfortable place to just knock up a, uh, a meal in the evening or my breakfast and, ha and have somewhere comfortable to sit and uh, not have to just sort of lie down in the tent or whatever. So uh, that was that. And I'll cover a few other bits and pieces in a minute. So just a few last little bits and pieces to to show you to give you the complete picture of what I ended up taking with me. Um, just a few bits of tools and things so took a tire plugger kit which I already had. Um, I packed some tools into here. I, I ended up what I'd wanted to do is have one of those uh, plastic tool tubes attached to the bike and I just didn't get my ordering sorted out uh, to get one in time. But I think I'll still go for one of those on my bike, it'll kind of work out okay. Um, what I ended up with in here uh, is a Leatherman style tool. This is one I already had so I just decided to take that. The reason that I like it is it's got a decent set of pliers on there and it also comes with a range of bits including some uh, of the Allen Hex key bits which is the right size for a lot of the fasteners on my bike takes care of the uh, Phillips and uh, flat bit screwdrivers as well so that that just was handy that I already had that and uh, was useful to useful to take um, this is part of the toolkit I take I also took the standard tools for the bike which is which are not very good but they're they're in there and I also popped a few more tools in another bag just because I couldn't fit it all in one place. So there's um, in the other bag on the bike, uh, there's a, a small ratchet um, socket set. And then these were just the uh, the bits in the sizes for the key things on the bike that I needed. Also took a set of needle nose because I just find them to be really useful things when uh, you're trying to do a lot of jobs. So. That's why I ended up taking, I don't know if those are the right things, I, I, um, with the tool tube that I was trying to order, I was also trying to get a, a more of a trail tool type thing from uh, the company at the same time, which looked probably a bit more efficient than any of this stuff. But uh, that, for what it's worth, that's, that's what I took. Um, everyone talks about taking duct tape. Um, I went to get some duct tape and came across this and thought, you know whether I'm right or wrong I don't know but it's a metal repair tape um, so very similar to duct tape but I figured that if I uh, needed to do a repair which is in a hot hot area of the bike um, 
that might even be better than duct tape. Who knows? Probably has downsides as well that I don't know about. So um, I didn't use any of this stuff, so can't really talk to whether it's any good or not. This is effectively very similar to WD-40. Uh, it's uh, it was from Decathlon. Only reason I got it is just because it was a small can. So um, took a first aid kit. Uh, now my food bag. Um, just another dry bag um, which had a bunch of food. This just had some uh, pre-cut type ready meals. Um, got some of the stuff you can get in the UK called Look What We Found which is is good. They're only small portions but they're very nicely made, very tasty and uh, you can just heat them up or you can, you know, extremists, you could uh, you could eat them cold if you needed to. You know, I took a few packets of couscous and sort of flavoured couscouses, a bit of pasta, um, bits and bobs like that, as well as a, sort of a tea kit and some coffee. With this stuff, it meant that I could get all of that on the bike and not have to have a separate uh, dry bag strapped to the back seat. So the tent, in my case, actually went in the panniers. So I know it's more typical to see those kind of things put in a, a roll top dry bag that goes on the back seat. But I, I wanted to try to uh, tour without anything like that so that everything I had was in reasonably secure locked boxes. Uh, so I could just stop the bike and go and have a look at something without worrying about it if I needed to. I'm quite pleased I did go that route on this occasion, but it did mean that I didn't have space for other things that I would have liked to have taken, such as some camera gear to actually film the film the touring. So I'm sure I'll do it differently another time. And finally, just because uh, you know, I've, I've managed to forget it, um, one other thing I did take, not um, not strictly something you need, it's it's something I already had, which is a this is an 80 litre dry bag. Uh, from Packsafe, and the uh, if you've not seen their stuff before, what, what they have is uh, this um, mesh which actually fits around the outside of the, the bag. That in completely encloses the bag, and it's locked, and it will lock uh, on a cable lock to the bike. So, what what I use that for, um, and I've done this when I've uh, done a bike trip with my, with my wife before as well. And, pop everything into this bag and it will fit all of your bike gear and add a bit more actually to one of these um, and can get changed into something a bit more human like so those are quite a nice item if you've not seen them before probably not complete security I'm sure somebody could cut that so you wouldn't want to leave it somewhere particularly dodgy but we've um, we've used it for instance when we went to a beach uh, that really is it. <laughs> that's the last thing I was going to show you. So I hope there's some use. Uh, please let me know what you think. And uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>